Hello everyone, and welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. As you can see, this room is full of things that can just absolutely destroy you, including Keese, apparently. Let's go ahead and take him out. Boulders, let's get in this... Though apparently he can't come close enough to actually hurt us. But boulders that roll around, flaming, like, totem poles, there are... You know, fire that comes up from the walls. Luckily, we have a big treasure chest here, which I believe is going to be the compass. I'm surprised it takes so long in this dungeon to find the map and the compass. It seems like those things should maybe be things that you would find at the beginning of the dungeon. And this is kind of, like, relatively close to the beginning of the dungeon. I thought that boulder was actually, like I said, going to be in my face right there. But I'm just, I feel like it should be a little closer to the beginning. Now, here is one of those doors that that Goron was talking about in the last episode. Go ahead and try and open it. Oh, it's, yep. So that's a kind of a cheap move there on the developer's part, I would say, but kind of funny as well, I think. Now, there's. I was going to say there's a specific way you got to th go throughout this maze thing to not get hurt, and obviously that was not the right way. And here is. Oh, see, like every time, it's like they've got it planned out to get in your way and stuff. This totem pole is annoying, or whatever you want to call it. You've got to be up towards the edge of the wall to get by this thing. Look at that. And especially right here, if you try and even... Yeah, like, look, you've got to go around this, but if you try and go straight, you got a fire thing in front of you. So it's just like they tried everything they could think of. Luckily, we made it without too much problem. Luckily, we have a key. Like, when I've played it before, I'll get to this area and not have a key. You have to go all the way back, and it's just a pain, you know? And we'll save that Goron in a second. The thing is, you can't get to this edge of the place without going through that little middle area. Oh, no. You know what? Fine. I'm going to let you live today, buddy. But you can't get over to this area without actually going toward, like, through that middle area, like I said. So it makes it kind of difficult. It looks like you would just be able to walk over here and hit the switch. But you actually have to go, like I said, for the 500,000th time through the middle area. And that switch only lasts for, like, 10 seconds. Look at that. And the flames are back. And you might be wondering, well, where can I go now? Because that looks like a fake door, does it not? Well, actually, it doesn't really, but it is a fake door. So let's go ahead and put a bomb down here. Or a Goron special crop, depending on how you want to say it. And that will reveal the actual door. Luckily, if you don't have bombs, usually they will have a bomb drop in these little pots over here. Actually, I think it's all the time they'll have a bomb drop. Because if you didn't have that, I think you would be... Like, how else would you get out of here? I don't see any way to actually get out of here other than dying, so I'm not sure exactly. But, you know, we made it without dying, so let's go ahead and go through here. We have an important enemy here. I'm not sure what this thing's actually called, so let's go ahead and investigate if I can get a Z-Target on him. No! Oh my goodness! There we go. A Flare Dancer. Extinguish, extinguish its flaming clothes first. Like that Goron told us, we can use the Goron special prop, but I never do that. All I use is the, the hook shot to pull him out of his body or whatever. Or his extinguish or his flaming clothes or whatever Navi called it. Oh my lord. Wow, apparently that does work. I never thought of actually using that. You know what? The reason why I never did that is because up until I started doing this Let's Play, I actually thought you would have to time the bomb throw or whatever. But whenever I started, you know, practicing for this Let's Play, I found out that you don't have to time it. Anytime you throw the bomb and it hits an enemy, it will explode. So I guess it actually does make a little more sense just to use the, you know, the bombs. Because it looks like that does a little bit more damage than using the hook shot and then using the Master Sword. So I'm not sure about that. I'll have to test that out or something. And another thing that I just remembered that I keep forgetting to talk about... Okay, never mind. I thought I was going into a room I've already been in. You know that one that I had to play the Scarecrow song to get into? I thought that was this room again somehow. But another thing that I keep forgetting to talk about is the um, music in this temple. Basically what happened, apparently in the original Japanese release and maybe even some early American releases, you know, NTSC releases, I think it was only the first, you know, release of it. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. Basically the original versions of the game have some sort of music in the game that apparently people felt was offensive or something in this dungeon right here. Apparently it was too... I think what happened was it had like a an Islamic chant in or, or something like that and people didn't like it so they took it out. But I thought it sounded pretty cool. You can li listen to it on YouTube or whatever. And I think it makes the dungeon a little bit more... Of course. Of course. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this now. 
Oh, how did I make that? I could hear the thing about to turn the fire back on, but anyway, here we have the Megaton Hammer. Like, this is one of the best, one of my favorite items in the game. It just smashes things into pieces. But luckily, whenever you get the thing out of the chest, they don't actually make the fire come back, luckily. But now that we have that, we can actually smash these things on the floor. I thought that fire that fire keys is coming after me. I'm gonna have to take care of him. But what I was saying about the you know the chant or the music or whatever, it is pretty much the same exact music, just with some sort of Islamic chant or something like that. And I've like I said, I've listened to it on YouTube, and I think it gives the dungeon a little bit more character and personality because it sounds like maybe you know ancient people built. Obviously, they did ancient Hylians or somebody built this dungeon or temple. And I think it gives it a little more character and personality and history. But apparently other people didn't feel the same way. They felt like it was offensive. And they took it out. But I would just play it for you guys right here or something like that. But I'm not sure how the copyright works and all that and stuff. So I'm not going to do that. But if you guys want to, you guys can go listen to... Just search on YouTube something like... You know, original Fire Temple music or something like that. And I'm sure it'll come up. That's how I found it. But yeah, tell me what you guys think about it in the comments. Or if you've never heard of it... I mean, or if you have ever heard of that. The only reason I ever heard of that, I think it was in an issue of Nintendo Power where they talked about it. Other than that, there would have been no way for me to tell. Here we have another... I was about to say, if I fall down there, I swear. Because this block right here acts as a shortcut to get back up here just in case you do fall off. So it would have been kind of ironic if I fell off right before the shortcut that would have helped me get back up here in the first place. Alright, now here I'm surprised. I was just about to say I'm surprised Navi's not telling us that the switch is rusted. Like, I can't see that. If you try and step on these switches, they don't exactly work. And you have to use the Megaton Hammer to smash that thing. Is there a key in here? Oh, yes, there is. I was gonna say, how am I gonna complete the dungeon if there's not a key in here? I think this guy right here, this Goron, is going to tell us about a, a thing about the beginning of the dungeon or something like that. Let's see if my memory is right. A door is hidden inside the statue at the entrance to this temple. But the Goron's special crop won't work on it. Don't you have anything stronger? I don't know, you didn't see me swim... Swimming, apparently that's a new word. Swinging that hammer. That sounds a little bit more powerful. And this is like the hammer of legend. You think they would recognize that. So you know what, guys? I'm gonna meet you at the beginning of the dungeon where we're going to put this hammer to good use. Oh, and by the way, guys, I forgot to show you this in particular, which we need to do, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't want to- No, no! Uh, okay, I made it. I'm not sure, by the way, if I've gone in this switch right here. I think I have. Let's see, I want to see what's in here real quick. I think this actually just puts me back up to that one room that I just left. Of course. But the reason we had to hit that thing down right in front of me, right there, is because this actually takes you back to the- that room, Darunia's room is down there. The boss room or whatever, so we have to go back down there. So I'm going to meet you back at the beginning of the temple, and I'll see you guys in a second. Alright guys, now we're back here. Let's go ahead and- I like this about this game where you just gotta smack these temple- or statues out of existence here. And look, they actually do kind of disappear. You don't- they go into the wall and they just kind of disappear. Luckily, that one key- the reason I said before that if we didn't have that key, we wouldn't be able to progress is because that door requires a key, and we have to come in here to actually get the boss key. Man, there's a lot of enemies in here, aren't there? Oh, another thing about these enemies right here... Wow, that just completely was a fail. What I was going to show you was that if you hit the ground next to them, they kind of flop, like turn over like a, a snail or something, like putting salt on their shells. Are, are more of these tile things? Come on. No, no, no. Oh, made it, made it, made it. I am not a really big fan of like likes, the enemies. What is this here? Oh, man, another one of these things? Alright, made quick work of him, and I just found out by accident that you can actually use the Megaton Hammer to make him, you know, fall out of his flaming clothes or whatever Navi said that one time. I'm actually not sure what's in this thing right here. It can't be a key, right? Watch it be a key. 
Oh, bomb. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't remember needing any more keys to beat this dungeon other than the boss key. So I was about to be confused as to why there was gonna be a key in that... You know, that chest there. And I was about to be confused as to why the switch wasn't being pushed down, but then I remembered it is actually a... A rusted switch, which you have to use the Megaton Hammer on. Obviously, this is gonna be the boss key. I mean, anytime you see an ornate blue and gold, you know, chest, there's gonna be a boss key in it. Here's like a, pretty much the last Goron that we have to save. I want to. I wonder what he's going to tell us. Oh well, apparently I'm just gonna skip the text and not get to tell what he says. Every other Goron, you haven't been able to skip the text like that. And then for the very last one, they're like, oh, but you, I guess this isn't important. You can skip it if you want to. And, but any other time I want to be able to skip text, like maybe the first cutscene of the game that I've seen five million times, I can't skip it. But something like that I actually want to see, you know. All right, so I'm going to go in there, but I have to go do something, like help out my brother for a second. So I will meet you guys back here in a second. Alright guys, sorry about that. You know what? It's just like every time I start an episode, people, for whatever reason, so, like, need me to do things that they can do themselves. Like, my brother couldn't get the dog in from outside, so he wanted me to do it. Well, I guess that is kind of understandable, because that dog listens to anything I say, pretty much. Subterranean Lava Dragon, Volvagia, probably one of my favorite bosses of all time, and it's not even like a, a novel boss fight as far as mechanics go or anything like that, but as far as the epicness, if we can say that, you know, without being ridiculous, look where we are right now, like we're on fire in this place, or no, we're not on fire, but we're, you know, well, I did significantly less damage to him than I thought I was going to be able to do, but we are in this, like, oven of an area here. Let's go ahead and equip some arrows. I think we can shoot him with arrows while we're while he's flying around like that. Wow, we need the Demegaton hammer. And I was just gonna check and see if I got all the gold skull tallers, which I did. But this area, like just look at it. It is full of fire. We are completely encased and closed in here. The platform to exit the area is gone. We can't leave even if we wanted to. And we have a flaming fire dragon. Better than any other dragon that I think I've seen in games like Skyrim. Obviously, it's not as beautiful as a game like that. There they go again, knocking on the door and trying to get my attention. It's just like, you know, for those of you who don't know, I actually put... Wow, I didn't... I forgot about this attack. For those of you who don't know, I actually put... There's no way you could know. I put a sign on the door, basically it says recording, shut up, to that, something to that effect. And apparently people just don't care about that anymore. I wonder if that's going to be a big problem in college. I hope not. Hopefully, I don't think this guy's got much left. And another thing I'm not sure about, I wonder if the power stab attack actually transfers attack power from the Megaton Hammer. You know what I mean? Like, for those of you who don't know, if you do like a jump slash like this, and then you do the power crouch stab thing, it will have the same attack power as a, a jump slash. So I'm not sure if that will actually work with the Megaton Hammer. Like if you do a Megaton Hammer jump slash and then you do a Master Sword, you know, power stab. I'm not sure if it'll have the same attack power as like whatever the last attack you did with the sword was. Or if it will actually take whatever power the Megaton Hammer had. Oh, come on. Make up your mind. Oh, I swear. Come on. I guarantee this next hit will probably probably be the one that does him in, too. Alright, I just decided to speed that up because we've seen that attack before. Now, I've also read on, like, some Zelda Wikipedia, or not Wikipedia, but the Zelda Wiki, that there is apparently a, a model in the game of an R-Wing from, like, Star Fox, and that model was actually used, like, you can, I guess you can access it via, I don't know, Game Shark or something like that. And what it does, or what it was used for, was to map the flight patterns of Volvagia here. And you can apparently, like I said, through the Game Shark, actually find an R-Wing that flies throughout the place. So that is really cool. Maybe I'll show you guys that, because I have a Game Shark for the Super... Not Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. There we go, he's dead. 
But anyway, yeah, so it's pretty cool that they used an R-Wing to map out the flight patterns of Volvagia. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I'll link, link the article that I found in the description. Of all of the boss deaths in this game, I found this one to be one of the most disturbing because he burns up, all you see is bones. I wonder if you can investigate him. Yep, you can, Well, bag it. But I think it's kind of funny how you can investigate his head before he dies. Anyway, he burns up into a crisp, basically. His bones go everywhere, and then his head lands right next to you. So one of the more creepy boss deaths I think about, or I think, in this game. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate what you did. I thank you on behalf of the entire Goran race. You turned out to be a real man, just as I thought you would. By the way, I, the Wild Darunia, turned out to be the Great Sage of Fire. I like how they don't know these things, like they don't know that they're the Sage of whatever. Isn't that funny, brother? Well, this must be what they call destiny. Nothing has made me happier than helping you seal the evil here. Hey, brother, take this. This is a medallion that contains the power of the fire spirits and my friendship. Alright, the fire medallion to Rudy awakens as a sage and apparently adds his out power to ours, but as I keep saying, we don't actually get any special powers or anything. Don't forget, now you and I are true brothers! And like nothing ever happened, we are back in the Death Mountain Crater. And the next episode, guys, we have a pretty much like if you haven't picked up on the pattern by now. It's like uh, one or two episodes of mopping up for the dungeon, and then one or two episodes for the dungeon, and it just repeats. So in the next episode, we're going to pretty much get ready for the Water Temple. And if you know anything about this game, you know how difficult the Water Temple can be at times. Hopefully I don't have that problem, but I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.